<laughs> Hello, everyone. Accessibility is the fun. <laughs> okay. Uh, trials of an accessible video player. Last year, the stage one uh, we created a subtitling process. It's been putting subtitles and captions onto mobile devices. Okay. Uh, first of all, on behalf of all present, I would really like to acknowledge my respects to the original custodians of this country we're meeting here today, the Wurundjeri people, and pay my personal respects to the existing family members of the Wurundjeri people, and also to your elders as So, my name's Sean. I've been working at Tang Institute for 10 years now as a student, a teacher, and a multimedia guy. And worked on lots of different projects. I've worked on an iPhone, the old style of iPhone. And we've worked with Wii and Nintendo Wii and uh, websites and a whole bunch of different things. And lately, accessibility has been coming up quite a lot. So, stage one of this project, as I just said, is about creating captions and getting to work in HTML5 uh, browsers and also on mobile devices. And stage two of the project is to create an accessible play in HTML5. So just providing the captions have some aspect of accessibility to it. But video you know, player needs to be a little bit more than that. Alright. And it also needs to be very easy to use. Okay. I should say the reason why I'd like it to be easy to use is not necessarily just for the user the person at the end who can press the play button, but it should be easy for people to actually implement put onto the web page and to work with. So, being a developer, I like things to be really easy. It needs to be a long lunch break. <laughs> so, why actually make one? Aren't there actually heaps of accessible players out there already? Uh, it turns out that there's really not that many players out there. There's lots of video players like Vimeo, YouTube, and Acorn, JW Player, etc. 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 But all of the video players that I've had a look at, look, I haven't looked at every video player in the world. Quite a few million of them. But they all fall into one of the categories. And they're flash based. And the framework, they're kind of it's moving away from flash. flash. Yeah. yeah. They're moving away from flash. So we need to look at the new technology for HTML5. Uh, they may not be accessible at all, or they may be partially accessible. Uh, Acorn was really, really good. I think you sent me a link to that. It was, it was excellent. Uh, very accessible. Uh, until you went full screen, and then it wasn't accessible at all. Uh, it also had an issue with Chrome, where it would only play one <coughs> video file per page. So it worked pretty well, but it wasn't perfect. Um, the other issue that oh, I don't particularly like is that a number of these players, well, a few of them are true, they have a lot of JavaScript to set up. So if we give this to a teacher or a some other form of developer, you still have to do a lot of initialization at the start. And so that to me just makes it a step too far. Things should just be easy. Okay. So this particular player it needs to work on HTML5 based web browsers. It's not designed to work on mobile or Okay. The reason why, as I was, I was telling Evan before, the reason why it's not working on mobile browsers at the moment is that there are essentially five things that need to happen to get it to work on a mobile device using JavaScript. And all of those five things are available in modern browsers at the moment, such as Chrome, and Firefox, and Safari. Uh, but iPad supports none of those five things that you need, and Android supports one of them. So I had it, I did have a, a look through to see what effect would be if trying to get this to work on my mobile device and it was like a step too far for the project. It needs to be easy to add to a web page and I would like it to use no JavaScript to when you're setting up the player. Uh, I use a common JavaScript library for support, it just makes my job a lot easier to use jQuery, honestly. It takes a lot of the work out for me. And I use jQuery because well, like it says it's fairly common and a lot of people are using it already so it's integrated into Hopefully. Have an easy to update design. So this, the design for this web uh, video player that I've created is done in CSS. It's not JavaScript based. You don't have to change any JavaScript. Okay. 
use ARIA attributes. Do you know what ARIA is? Yes, it's an ARIA model. That's accessible rich internet application, Sean. Yes. <laughs> and what, this is a new standard that's coming out. I thought it had been around for quite some time, but it turns out it's quite recent. And browsers like HTML5 have just started to incorporate this standard into their makeup. And what this does is puts little extra pieces of information in the web page that informs people who aren't cited what's happening on the web page. Okay. So for example, if we've got a, a, a video player and it's playing and we've got a little slider going along, it's you now a 10 second mark, a 20 second mark, 30 second mark, if you can't see that, you don't know what it's up to. So if you are um, blind and you can't see that information, you can tap to that item that should tell you where you're up to so you can then interact with it at the point you want it to be. That's one of the things that Aria mentioned. And we hope that it complies with WebCAD 2 to lay where technically possible. So, uh, at the beginning of the project, we said we would like to try and achieve that, and uh, I think we've come through the place. Excellent. So, the player at the moment, which we'll have a look at, I think, on the next screen, is it is screen reader accessible, it's keyboard accessible, and it's full screen and not. Uh, it doesn't appear to have a keyboard trap, which is nice. It does have subtitles, it has an audio description track, so for example if you're uh, sight impaired you can have a second audio track that plays with the video and tells you what is happening, which you can't see. The subtitles can be changed in many different ways, you can change the font, you can have like times in your own, you can have Georgia, and many other types. <laughs> it's for you. <laughs> Colour, size, opacity and position. Uh, and it also does have updated feedback on some browsers. Firefox reports RE information better than others. In uh, Chrome it gives you uh, some usable information and after a, after a time it gives you quite usable information. Firefox is very, very good. So we have the course of the play, the pause, the step forward, step back, uh, time control, up, down volume, full screen, Captions, caption setting, and audio description button. Okay. Let's let's just play the video, and um, we'll have a look at the caption setting. It's Cam. Cam has been in all my videos recently. Thanks. Sorry, I'm not plugging the audio. Tiles, kitchens, everything like that, based on the principle. Okay, let's go to caption settings. To get a square, please a menu of three, four, five. Change the foreground colour, so you have some red text on a yellow background. <laughs> and we can OK it. If we should get our audio descriptive track, just click on it, it's green, so it's active. There I am. I'm just in the background there, I'm explaining how to tie a string to an app. Okay, so this is the code I wanted it to be easy to implement on the page, and I think it's easier than last year's one. Um, to get it to work, we need my little piece of JavaScript that comes with the file um, for you to use. It's the whole video player to get it to work. The one that we saw of Cam, sorry. We've got. Uh, no, I'm sorry. That's alright. We've got a, a div tag with just this big label to access the video player. Alright. We have the video information. We're still working through, well, not we, but we're still working through the um, file formats. We still do need to supply two video file formats for HTML5 video. There's nothing different there to any normal implementation of HTML5 video. We do have the track tag that is supplying the subtitles. Okay. The only difference here is to supply an audio descriptive track, we just pack in an audio player as well. And again, we've got the two file formats for the different browsers. Okay? If you only want to play the video with the subtitles, that just gets left out. Okay? No special changes need to be made. Alright, uh, So, in conclusion, what have we got here? HTML5 is going to be set to become a standard in 2014, so this is the way things are moving. 
there should be one video format that is accepted by all browsers. Um, it does seem to be chopping and changing at the moment between the two of them. So I don't know. It's fine. <coughs> the track tag should and is being made available to browsers at the moment. If you put the track tag into your HTML5 video, then it will play the captions for you in Chrome and Firefox, I believe. Uh, but the player's not accessing you can't use your keyboard controls and it doesn't have any screen reader access and so on. Well, this one doesn't have a flash fallback put into it. Really, to, to put a flash fallback into it, it's, it's, we put a flash player into the video tag and any browsers that don't know how to play HTML5 will play your flash file for you. Okay. That's going to be necessary to do for some time. And the reasoning being, as some people are saying, is that Microsoft are going to support Windows XP for a little bit longer just yet. And XP won't have Internet Explorer 9, which is the first Internet Explorer that supports HTML5. So we're going to be stuck with that for a while yet. Yeah. Uh, saving subtitles should be easier, which is going to be much have a great help to Brom because I imagine you'll have the same time with the video tag. <laughs> and keep an eye on Google because they're doing quite a lot of work with subtitles in YouTube at the moment. They're kind of doing some voice recognition stuff as well, which is starting to work uh, slowly. Okay. Uh, I do enjoy questions and emails, so if anyone's got any of those, please. Thanks. Thanks.